today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. This is all over the Bible, folks. I didn't make this up. It's not something that uh, it sounded like a good teaching and maybe it'll get some results. No, it's a spiritual law increased by association. Welcome everyone, I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining me today. I want to encourage you to take a few moments and write to us and let us know how that this broadcast is blessing your life. You know, we love hearing from you. You know, people write to us and contact us and, and let us know uh, all the time how much this broadcast is ministering to them, the teaching is blessing them, and we want to hear your testimony as well. I love it when you take what we teach you and apply it to your life and you get results because that's what you're supposed to do, get results, amen. The Bible says that uh, these signs will follow them that believe. So if you believe the Word of God and you apply it, then the next thing is you're going to have results. So share your testimony with us. We would love to hear from you. Today we're continuing our study on increase by association. We have been talking about this over the last three weeks, and I trust that most of you have been able to join us if not, then go back on YouTube and take a look at it, and I know that it will be a blessing to you. So we're going to continue today talking about increase by association. Now, for the benefit of those of you that this may be your first time watching, and I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. This is the scripture that we base this study upon. It says in verse 20, "'He that walketh with wise men shall be wise.'" but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. This is simply telling us that who you run with, now I'm, I'm saying it the way I would say it, who you run with has everything to do with your outcome. If you, if you fellowship and you associate with wise people, you're going to increase in wisdom. On the other hand, if you hang around fools, if you hang around people that uh, uh, are constantly messing up, so to speak, then it's going to have an effect on your life as well. Brother Hagen used to say, uh, who you run with, be careful because you might imbibe their spirit. Means you become a partaker of what's on them. So be careful about who you associate with and who you run with. Uh, I, re I read this on last week's broadcast. And I want to read it again. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33 from the Amplified Bible says, evil companionships and associations corrupt good moral and character. So once again, it's important that you make a decision that you're going to run with the right kind of people. You know, the people that I run with, and I'm talking about fellowship with, and, and for the lack of a better word, hang out with, uh, associate with, they're people of faith. They're people that believe God. They're people that know how to stand in faith and refuse to give up. Not only that, they're winners in life. And that's the kind of people you need to run with. You say, well, I don't know people like that. Well, just log on to uh, uh, websites of men and women that teach the message of faith, just like I do, like other men do, like other women do. There are many of them. And you can log on to their websites and listen to their messages. You don't have to know them. You don't have to spend time with them. You don't have to have lunch with them to be in association with them. If you will adhere to their teachings and follow their example, then praise God, that constitutes walking with them. So once again, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Now I told you on last week's broadcast, uh, if you were watching, that I would give you some examples from the Bible this week, and I want to do that right now. So if you have your Bible with you, let's open them first of all to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 27. This is an example of increase by association uh, with Moses and Joshua. And I want to read uh, Numbers chapter 27 and verse 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hands upon him, and ask him before Eleazar the priest, 
and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. It actually says, and set him before them. And verse 20 says, and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of thy children of Israel or the children of Israel may be obedient. Now notice God is telling Moses, I want you to lay your hands on your servant, Joshua. And as a result of you laying hands on him, some of what is on you is going to come on him. Now remember, Joshua walked with Moses. If you, if you study, uh, particularly the book of Numbers, you're going to find out that Joshua hardly wanted Moses out of his sight. He was the man that was always nearby Moses. He was not only uh, his associate, his right-hand man, so to speak, but he adhered to what Moses said. He followed his example. And here, now it's time for Moses to, uh, to come home and be with the Lord, so to speak. And Joshua is to be his successor. And so now God is telling Moses, lay your hands on Joshua and put some of what's on you on him. So what does that tell us? that there is a spiritual law called increase by association. Now, in obedience to God, Moses did that. But did it work? Did he get any results from it? Well, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 34, you're going to find out that, yes, something did happen. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 34 if you've got your Bibles with you. I'm breaking in a new Bible here, so the pages are a little bit stiff. Deuteronomy chapter 34. And look at verse 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. So notice, after Moses laid his hands on Joshua, something happened. The spirit of increase came on Joshua. The same uh, honor The same wisdom that had been on Moses was now on Joshua. So you see from an example in the word of God, this is just one of many, that there is this law called the law of increase by association. Now, I want you to also look at 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 as another example of increase by association. I may not have time to go through all of this before we go to our break, but we'll come back to it. But I do want to start in 1 Kings chapter 19 and notice in verse 19, speaking of Elijah, he departed thence and found Elijah. And then it goes on to say in the latter part of that verse, and Elijah passed by him and cast his uh, mantle upon him. And then verse 21, the latter part of that, and Elijah went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So notice, remember what Proverbs 13, 20 says, he that walketh with wise men shall increase in wisdom. Now, because Elijah is now walking with, following after, associating with Elijah, something is about to happen to him. He's going to experience increase by association. Now, I want you to watch this special announcement. Our announcer is going to share something with you that's very important. And when we come back, I'm going to show you what happened to Elijah as a result of walking with Elijah. You don't want to miss it. I'll be back in just a moment. Are you hungry to see God move in your life? Are you walking with those who are experiencing the move of God? Today's eye-opening offer, the Increase by Association Package, contains Jerry Savelle's revealing teaching, Increase by Association, and his powerful book and CD series, Increase God's Way. In this package, you'll learn what it means to walk with the wise, how to associate with people you'll never meet, how to avoid common financial deceptions, and why increase is God's will for you. Who you associate with has everything to do with your destiny. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Increase by Association special package. If you commit to following the life example of Jerry Savelle, you can experience the same power, favor, and anointing of God that is on him. 
begin to operate in the law of increase by association today. Before we went to the break, we were talking about the spirit of increase coming on Elijah, just like it had been on Elijah. And you remember here, I want to read it once again in uh, 1 Kings, it says that Elijah ministered unto Elijah. In other words, he dropped everything and began to follow after him and began to adhere to his messages, his teaching. Uh, he followed after the anointing that was on Elijah. And then it came time for Elijah to be taken up in a whirlwind, you remember. And this is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 2. And it says in verse 9 that uh, when it was time for Elijah to be taken up, that Elijah said unto him, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now, what gave him the right to do that? Because he had followed after this great man of God. And there is a spiritual law. Once again, Proverbs 13, 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. In other words, if you walk with wise men, you're going to increase in wisdom. If you walk with honorable men, you're going to increase in honor. If you walk with anointed men, you're going to increase in in anoint, uh, the anointing. If you walk with prosperous men, you're going to increase in prosperity. It's a spiritual law, increase by association. So he says, I desire a double portion of your anointing. And then it tells us, and you know the story, but I want you to, I want you to get this. In uh, verse 13, Elijah, uh, when, when Elijah went up and he dropped his mantle, and Elijah took up the mantle of Elijah and he stood by the, the river, Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the waters and said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither and Elijah went over. Now notice he had seen Elijah do that before. And he had asked for a double portion of that anointing. And when he put that mantle on him, he wanted to know, did I get it? Did it work? Did I increase in the anointing? Did I get a double portion of Elijah's anointing? So he took that mantle and he smote the river Jordan and it parted for him just like it had done for Elijah. And then it says, and when the sons of the prophets, which were to uh, view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. Notice what happened. The spirit of increase that had been on Elijah has now come on Elijah. It's the law of increase by association. This is all over the Bible, folks. I didn't make this up. It's not something that uh, it sounded like a good teaching and maybe it'll get some results. No, it's a spiritual law, increase by association. Now, here's another example, and I want you to look at it with me from Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30. This is a very vivid example. And this has to do with Laban and Jacob. Genesis chapter 30. Let me get there with you. As I mentioned before, I'm breaking in a new Bible. The pages are sticking together. Here I am. Look at verse 27, Genesis chapter 30 and verse 27. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. In other words, he's saying to Jacob, I have learned before your coming, I didn't have anything. But now that you've come into my life, I have increased greatly. And then Jacob responding to what Laban said, he says in verse 30, for it was little which thou had before I came and it is now increased into a multitude and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming and now when shall I uh, depart? Notice what he says. You had absolutely nothing or you had little before I came into your life. But when I came into your life and you began an association with me, something came on you and it's called the spirit of increase. 
It's increased by association. Notice once again, it was little which you had before I came. You know, that's, that's been my testimony. I had little before Kenneth Copeland and Oral Roberts and Kenneth Hagan and T.L. Osborne came into my lives. And once again, as I mentioned on a previous broadcast, I, I didn't know the latter three, Kenneth Hagan, Oral Roberts, and T.L. Osborne, until some time later, I had met Kenneth Copeland, and then eventually uh, I came to work with Brother Copeland, moved to Fort Worth back in about 1970, 71, and I walked with him. He went nowhere without Jerry Savell. Back in those days, his staff consisted of he and Gloria and his father and a secretary and a bookkeeper and Jerry Savell. And I was the road crew. I went everywhere with Kenneth Copeland. We did three services a day. I was in every service. I was recording every message. I was his right-hand man. I was his sidekick, so to speak. I listened to every message, and as soon as I got home, I'd preach him to my wife, Carolyn, because I wanted her faith to be on the same level as mine. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, back in those early days, we didn't go for one night. We went for three weeks. Every meeting we did, three services a day. That's 21 services, and I'm in every one of them. I'm listening to every message. I'm taking notes. This is my Bible school, and I am not only taking notes and listening, but I am doing it. I'm applying it. I'm adhering to it. And after a period of time, it didn't happen overnight, but after a period of time, this law of increase by association began to work for me. The same results Brother Copeland was getting, the same results that he and Gloria were getting, Carolyn and I began to get. We were following their example. We saw what they did when times were rough, and we did exactly the same thing. We saw what they did when times were good, and we did exactly the same thing. You see, and then they introduced us to the ministry of Kenneth Hagin, and we learned how to operate in faith. We learned not to be moved by what we saw. We learned that if, if we would prepare to stand forever, then it wouldn't take very long. That's what Brother Hagin used to say. And I'd listen to him day and night. And I'd listen to Oral Roberts. I'd read his books. I'd listen to T.L. Osborne. All these men were great men of faith. And we were following their example. Just like the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. And so as a result of doing that, we began to experience increase. And I, I, I've said to Brother Copeland many times over the years, I said what Jacob said to Laban, Brother Copeland, before you came into my life, I had nothing. But since you're coming, it has increased greatly. Why? Because I didn't just work for him, I walked with him. There's a difference. You can walk with somebody and that same spirit of increase that's on them or that same spirit of wisdom that's on them or that same anointing that's on them can come on you. If you just work with them, that may not happen. You know, I, I watched over the years uh, uh, people that have worked with me. Uh, the spirit of increase should have come on them just like it was on me. But for some of them, it didn't happen. Why? Because they didn't walk with me. They worked with me, but they didn't walk with me. They didn't follow after my teachings. They didn't adhere to, to what I taught and they didn't follow the example. But those that walked with me, in fact, I have many testimonies. Uh, of one man that worked with me a number of years ago, when he came to work with me, he, was, he had, had small businesses and uh, he came to my Bible school and shut those businesses down and, and began to follow after the teachings and uh, as a result of it, he got completely out of debt. God began to bring increase into his life. And now today, he preaches the same message as I do, and he's experiencing the same increase that I'm experiencing. One of my pilots years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, he told me after he'd been working for me for one year, now he traveled with me because he flew the airplane, and he was in every meeting I did, and he began to learn the life of faith, he began to adhere to my teachings, followed after them, and he told me after one year, he said, I'm completely out of debt and the spirit of increase has come on me just like it's on you. 
So once again, he didn't just work with me or work for me. He walked with me. So once again, I want to give you a definition of walk. What does it mean? To walk means the observance of a manner of life as well as moral conduct. And uh, uh, Paul said, follow after me as I follow after the Lord. In other words, he's talking about discipleship. Follow my example. He's follow my teachings. Adhere to what I teach. It also means to accompany me and to conform to a certain way of life, a certain doctrine and certain teachings. Amen. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 9, he says, I have made myself an example unto you to follow after. Paul said, I've made myself an example unto you to follow after. You know, I, I've said many times, when I get to heaven, after spending a lot of time with my Father God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the next person I want to spend a lot of time with is the Apostle Paul. And I plan to tell him, I followed after your teachings. I adhered to your doctrines. I, I not only adhered to them, I not only followed after them, I not only lived by them, but I preached them. I preached every sermon you ever preached. And sometimes I think I might have preached them as good as you. That's what a little boy told me one time. He was about 10 years old. He walked up to me and he said, Brother Jerry, my mama makes me listen to your messages every night before I go to bed. And he said, and I think I can preach them just as good as you can. I said, well, son, I hope you can. And I hope when you grow up, you're still preaching them. Praise God. Amen. So once again, it's not just working with, it's walking with. Walking with those who have wisdom, you will increase in wisdom. Those who are prospering, walk with them. Follow after their teachings. Follow their example, and you will increase in prosperity. Those who flow in the anointing of God, follow after their example. Follow after their teachings, and you will begin to increase in the anointing of God in your life as well. So this is a powerful message that I trust is blessing you and inspiring you, and I want to encourage you don't just listen to it, but be a doer of it. Now, I want to encourage you right now. If you've been a follower of this ministry, if you have followed after the teachings that we have brought to you, you know, I have been doing television broadcasts since 1978. That's when I first went on television. That's a lot of broadcasts. And we have partners all over the world. We have offices and staff in different parts of the world. And I travel all over the world. I've preached in, I think, about 46 or 48 different nations. And we have people that have followed our teachings for years and years and years. And many of them have never become partners with us, even though they say, it's your teachings that changed my life. You know, I believe that it's a proper thing to do. If you have followed this ministry and our teachings have brought great increase into your life, then I need for you to consider, prayerfully consider becoming a partner with this ministry. We don't ask for partnerships and we don't ask for offerings very often, but after teaching this to you and, 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 and knowing that it's one of the reasons why that I'm prospering today is because I partnered and I'm still partners with those ministries that imparted into my life the most. I still partner with Kenneth Copeland. I still contribute to Kenneth Hagin's ministry, even though he's in heaven, but his son has taken that ministry and I still participate in it. I still partner with Oral Roberts ministry, even though he's in heaven, but his son Richard and I are very dear friends and we minister together and I still partner with that ministry. And Brother Osborne, even though he's in heaven, but his daughter is carrying on that ministry and I still contribute to that ministry. I'm still partaking of that ministry a blessing that was on those ministries. And if you have been following after this ministry and it's been beneficial to you and it's helped you in your spiritual growth, then I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider becoming a partner with us. If you'd like to know how, go on our website, jerrysavelle.org and just log on partnership and it'll tell you how. If you don't uh, feel led to be a partner, maybe 
the Lord would lead you to make a contribution to the ministry to help us reach out to people all over the world and teach them how to be winners in life. I'm going to take you into a message right now uh, from our announcer regarding the special resource package we have available to you. And then I'll be back in just a few moments with some closing remarks. So watch now and I'll be right back. Are you hungry to see God move in your life? Are you walking with those who are experiencing the move of God? Today's eye-opening offer, the Increase by Association package, contains Jerry Savelle's revealing teaching, Increase by Association, and his powerful book and CD series, Increase God's Way. In this package, you'll learn what it means to walk with the wise, how to associate with people you'll never meet, how to avoid common financial deceptions, and why increase is God's will for you. Who you associate with has everything to do with your destiny. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Increase by Association special package. If you commit to following the life example of Jerry Savelle, you can experience the same power, favor, and anointing of God that is on him. Begin to operate in the law of increase by association today. Once again, I want to thank you for joining with me today. And before we leave there, I want to pray for you. You know, we've been through some tough times over the last several months. And I know a lot of people, even in this new year, are still experiencing some uh, tests and trials that they're endeavoring to overcome. And I want to pray for you right now. If you're having a hard time, particularly financially, I want to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up all of the friends and partners of this ministry that may be struggling right now in their finances. And I pray in Jesus' name for financial breakthroughs. Lord, I'm praying for the favor of God to manifest in their life and create opportunities for them to prosper like they've never prospered before. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus, take your hands off God's property. You have no right to rob them of the blessings of God. And in Jesus' name, I command you to take your hands off of them. Loose them and loose their finances, their givers, their sowers, and you have no right to block their financial blessings. So in the name of Jesus, I believe that we receive in Jesus' name, and I want you to lift your hands right now and begin to praise God for it. Amen. Praise Him for it. Praise Him in advance before you ever see any results. That's one of the great uh, ways of exercising your faith and trust in God. I want to remind you of our special offer. This last time we'll make this offer to you. Uh, my book entitled Increase God's Way. Powerful little book that I want you to have in your home. And then three additional CDs, Increase God's Way. These uh, resources are available to you this week, this week only. So I want to encourage you to place your order right now. All the information for ordering is on the screen, so take a look at it or go to jerryseville.org. Thank you for joining me. We'll begin some new programs next week, so don't miss next week's broadcast. Till then, remember, your faith will overcome the world.